and an infectious personality. He was loved by so many, and he loved so many in return. Lavelle Davis was one of the hardest workers I've ever met in my entire life. I remember one night, Coach Wilkins was there, and he asked, who wants to play in the NFL? And Lavelle didn't raise his hand, and everyone looked at him because we knew he wanted to play in the NFL. But he said he doesn't want to play in the NFL, he wants to be a superstar. I've never met anyone as selfless as Lavelle. He gave that word new meaning, always putting the needs of others, his family, his team first. You would think a guy like Lavelle would be all about Lavelle, and that couldn't be farther from the truth. He was as humble as he was selfless. It was all about the team and the people he loved. We will never forget him and know we will all miss him dearly. Deshaun was one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Deshaun was truly a gentle giant. He would hit you hard on the field, and then the second practice was over. He was a big teddy bear. To know Deshaun Perry was to know empathy and genuine kindness. His calm presence made you feel safe and at home. Deshaun loved anything creative. He loved his family, teammates, friends, and community unconditionally. I will miss him forever. Our paths crossed this fall semester in arts marketing theory and practice. From our first class, it was incredibly apparent that he was a kind, intelligent, inquisitive, dedicated, and gifted student. Dear Deshaun, it was an honor meeting and knowing you. You have forever touched the lives of so many, and we are so much better people because of it. All of the students were amazing role models, friends, and people. The legacy and the impact they have had on all of our lives will last forever. It's really important they be remembered as the great, full human beings that they were and the ways that they really touched the lives of everyone around them. I'm Jim Ryan, President of the University of Virginia. I'd like to welcome everyone to this memorial service and reflection in honor of the three students we have lost, Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry, the students who were injured, Mike Hollins and Marley Morgan, and all who were touched by this tragedy. I'd like to especially welcome the families of Devin, Lavelle, Deshaun, Mike, and Marley who are here today. Welcome as well to Governor Glenn Youngkin, Rector Rick Clement, and other members of the board, federal, state, and local leaders and officials, and countless friends, classmates, teammates, coaches, students, faculty, staff, alumni, and community members, some here in KPJ and some watching on live stream. Before we begin our program, I'd like to extend my gratitude to those who have worked tirelessly to offer comfort and support to our community this week including those who organized the silent vigil on Monday and those who have organized today's event. I'd also like to let everyone know that we have counselors and clergy on site should you need them at any time during today's service. For those sitting on the floor of JPJ, counselors and clergy are available in locker rooms A through D to my left. And for those in the rest of the arena, counselors and clergy are available in the Hall of Fame on the main concourse, which is just above me. Uh, and just behind me and up one level. Thanks to each of these counselors and clergy members for being here. Our speakers and performers today will help to shine a light on the lives of Devin, Lavelle, and Deshaun. And I hope that we can take a measure of solace in being together to remember and to honor them along with Mike and Marley. As I've said before, shared grief is a powerful reminder that it is our bond with each other and with a common community that matter more than our perceived differences and give us the strength to endure. I have more to say later in the program, but for now, I'd like to turn the podium over to Rector Rick Clement. Thank you, President Ryan. <clears throat> to the parents, to the families, Devin, Lavelle, Deshaun, Mike, and Perry Lee. To their fellow students, the professor, and others who participated in the field trip last Sunday night. Our bus driver, emergency personnel, 
and to all the university families. The Board of Visitors as individuals and as members of this great community. Like all of us, we share in the deep remorse of the occasion that has brought us together this afternoon. Each of us is here today as part of our university family to share our grief with each other, to console one another, but also to forge the healing of our beloved university. We are here to find strength in each other, no matter what our place may be in our family, whether as a student, a groundskeeper, a dean, professor, or coach. We are here to heal this wound inflicted on all of us. But regardless of our role, we are also called upon to celebrate the lives of Jeffrey, Lavelle, and Bouchon, and to embrace what this university teaches us beyond the classroom, that we're fortunate to have each other in good times and in times of loss. To our family, we honor and we pay our deepest respect to you. Today, you reflect on your son's lives with much thankfulness. And we share in the joy that they brought to you, to your other loved ones, and to everyone so blessed to have known them. Let me close by saying, be assured that these three fine young men will forever be remembered at our university every year. Thank you. Welcome to everyone here with us at JPJ, as well as those watching in Charlottesville and around the nation. My name is Jay James, and I will be your host for today's event. We will open with a prayer from Jeffrey Dunn. Bow your heads, touch somebody. Thank you, God, for waking us up this morning and putting breath into our lungs. Lord, we come here with all kinds of emotions, sad, anger, frustration. But God, give us peace and forgiveness as you have the final say in the end. Heavenly Father, I pray for Bashan, Lavelle, and Devin and their families. I pray they find comfort and love in your presence. Lord, I pray for Mike and Marley as they fight and recover. Psalm 46.1 says that God is my refuge and my strength, always ready in times of trouble. Lord, help us to lean on you in times of trouble and heartbreak. Thank you for gathering us here in honor and celebrate my teammates' lives. I pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. welcome the MLK Community Choir as they perform Total Praise.
Mr. Stewart, accompanied by his classmates for a poem reading. He will be reading the poem, Life is Fine, by Langston Hughes. The song says that there are girls at school, and Del McCann, but not only members of the football team here at the university, but vital members of the community. Their life trying all across our grounds and beyond. These young men are brothers to us, sons, best friends, classmates, leaders, and so much more. Their impact on all of us has not ended and will always endure. Now I would like to read a poem by Langston Hughes entitled Life is Fine. Life is Fine. I went down to the river. I sat down on the bank. I tried to think but I couldn't, so I jumped in and sang. I came up once and hollered. I came up twice and cried. If that water hadn't have been so cold, I might have sunk and died. But it was cold in that water. It was cold. I took the elevator to the 16th floor above the ground. I thought about my baby. And I, thought I, and I thought I would jump down. I stood there and I hollered. I stood there and I cried. If it hadn't have been so high, I might have jumped and died. But it was high up there. It was high. So since I'm here, so since I'm still here living, I guess I will live on. I could have died for love but for living I was born. Though you may hear me holler, and you may see me cry, I'll be dogging, sweet baby, if you don't see me die. Life is fine, fine as wine. Life is fine. Reflections from Director of Athletics, Dr. Carla Williams. I love my job because of the tremendous love I have for our student athletes. As a mother and as Director of Athletics, this tragedy has pushed me to my limits, but God is faithful and my faith sustains me, as I know it does many of you. We are grateful for the recovery of Marley and Mike. Mike continues to improve here in Charlottesville. Marley is back home with her family and recovering well. We pray for their continued healing. We are also mindful of and in prayer for the other students who are on that bus, as well as the faculty member and the bus driver. We know the impact of that night was deep and painful. May you continue to receive healing and comfort. I would like to share a Bible verse and some family stories about Devin, Lavelle, and Deshaun. In John, chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, Jesus is speaking to Martha, and it reads, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even if they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Devin, Lavelle, and Deshaun believe this, and we know their souls rest in peace. To the family, please take comfort in knowing you will see them again. Devin, Lavelle, and Deshaun were loved by so many people. I feel so blessed to have known them, and I feel especially blessed to have been able to spend time 
the families over the last few days. We've cried, we've laughed, we've hugged each other tightly, we've reminisced about their childhoods, we've looked through photos, we cried, we laughed more. Three family memories I'd like to share. First, Devin, or as his family says, Devin, the dancing machine. Our players also talk about how Devin loved to dance. His uncle sent me a video of a 10-year-old Devin arriving at track practice early, getting out of the car and proceeding to put on a one kid dance off in the parking lot. His rhythm was suspect, but his confidence was never in doubt. Lavelle, when Lavelle would go home, he would always go to church. And his mom said he wanted to sit on the first pew, all six feet and seven inches, knowing that people could not see over him. And he would say to his mom, Mom, I got to sit up close. I got to hear everything. I can't miss anything. And his grandmother, who was here today, told us how when Lavelle came home, he wanted her to cook for him. And he especially loved the 18 scrambled eggs she would make for him. And Deshaun, the superhero. When he was six years old, Deshaun wanted to be a red Power Ranger for Halloween. So his parents bought him the costume and he wore the red suit and the red helmet for Halloween and he didn't take it off until after Thanksgiving. <laughs> we are better and we will do better because of Devin, Lavelle, and Deshaun. To the family, we love your son. We love your son. And we will make sure that legacy never fades at the University of Virginia. entire nation. After this tragedy, one special individual took notice and wanted to be here for these folks as well. Please welcome Grammy Award winning gospel singer Cece Winans as she sings Goodness of God. say my condolences, give my condolences to all the families, and that we know we serve a God who's able to take us through, and he's going to take you through one day at a time. I pray that all of us would understand the beauty of life, and that we would make the decision to accept Jesus as our Savior, so that whenever the time comes for us to leave here, young or old, that we're ready. Remember that God loves you, that he's with you, and that he's good. Goodness of God. Mm -hmm. I love you, Lord. 
for your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God cause all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have held me through the fire and in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Hey, cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath. so, so good with every breath that I am able I'm gonna sing of the good God bless you.
speaker will be President Jim Ryan as he offers a confession. Good afternoon again. My heart both swells and breaks to be here with all of you to celebrate and honor the lives of Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry as well as to recognize the amazing resilience of Mari Morgan and Mike Holland. My first real encounter with grief and loss was when my father died in 1997. I was 30, he was 66. One of the things I remember the most was his wake, where dozens of people came up to me trying to offer words of consolation. I appreciated all of the effort, but it became clear to me that some were comfortable with grief and had experienced it while others had difficult, difficulty confronting the sheer sadness of loss. The people I remember most were the ones in the first group who simply said, looking me in the eye, I'm sorry. I remain grateful to this day for their simple acknowledgement of the suffocating sorrow I felt to have lost my dad, and I promised myself to pass along that basic sympathy whenever I could. So to all the family and friends of Devon, Lavelle and Deshaun, let me say simply, I am so very sorry. I did not have the good fortune to know Devin, Lavelle, and Deshaun personally, but trust me, I admired them from afar. I grew up playing a lot of sports, including football, which I played from the time I was seven all the way through my senior year of high school. I was okay at sports, not great, but I was obsessed with sports nonetheless. As a kid, I thought about sports more than school, and I thought of myself as more of an athlete than an academic. It's what I wanted to be. It's who I wanted to be. And I've carried a part of that with me to this day. So when I saw players like Devin, Lavelle, and Deshaun, I, see, I saw who I wanted to be when I was growing up. Powerful, fast, talented, courageous, and graceful all at once, dazzling. But they were much more than just football players, as you've already heard and will hear more about. They were kind. They were funny. They were full of energy. They were serious students. They were sons and grandsons and brothers. They were hard workers. Devin could make friends with anyone. Lavelle was a leader of the groundskeepers at UVA, working to bring light to our past and to shine a path forward. And Deshaun was not just a student athlete, but also an artist and a musician. They were strong young men, but they were also good kids. I say all this because while I can never know someone else's pain, I appreciate and grieve the depth of this loss, the holes that it leaves in so many hearts, the hearts of their family, the hearts of their friends, the hearts of their teammates and coaches, who are both friends and family all at once. I mourn the games that will never be played, and the moments of joy on and off the field that will never be felt. I grieve for them for that. I grieve for their families. I grieve for their teammates and friends. I grieve for their coaches. I grieve as well for this community. This was no typical loss, if there ever is such a thing. It was a shocking event that reverberated around grounds and around the world, especially among our black students, faculty, staff, and alumni. It pierced the peace and innocence that graced our grounds last Sunday night. It changed our world. We need to acknowledge all that and pause for just a moment. And despite all of this, life beckons nonetheless. We can and will move forward as a community provided we move forward together. We can and will do this not to dishonor the lives lost, but on the contrary, to honor them. Two of my favorite lines of poetry are from Splendor in the Grass by William Wordsworth. 
For nothing can bring back the hour of splendor in the grass, of glory in the flower. We will grieve not, but rather find strength in what remains behind. I'm not a poet, but if it were me, I would have said instead that we will grieve and find strength in what remains behind. Because in my mind, it's possible to both grieve and eventually to find strength in what remains behind. We will find strength again together. We will do this to honor Devin, Devell, and Deshaun. We will find strength in the students on the bus who came to the aid of their friends and classmates. We will find strength in the first responders. We will find strength in the students who organized a silent vigil to bring the community together. We will find strength in the faculty who opened their homes to students and who reached out to students to see how they were doing. We will find strength in the staff members who ran toward the students who were struggling. We will find strength in the football team who decided the game mattered less than celebrating the lives of their teammates. We will find strength in the resilience and bravery of Marley and Mike. We will find strength in our alumni, friends, and colleagues across the country who offered to help in any way they could. We will find strength in the memories of those whose lives were lost and in their embrace of life itself. We will find strength in our faiths and beliefs, whatever they may be, and in knowing that Devin, Lavelle, and Deshaun were deeply loved by their families and friends. And we will find strength in the singular community that is the University of Virginia. And with this strength, we will, I hope, when we are ready, greet the morning and embrace the urgency of the life we have left to us, an urgency captured in a poem by Robert Francis called Summons. I first heard this poem more than 20 years ago at the indescribably sad occasion of a memorial service to the very young child of a friend of mine. And I've thought of it ever since. It goes like this. Keep me from going to sleep too soon, or if I go to sleep too soon, come wake me up. Come any hour of night. Come whistling up the road. Stomp on the porch. Bang on the door. Make me get out of bed and come and let you in and light a light. Tell me the northern lights are on and make me look. Or tell me clouds are doing something to the moon that they never did before and show me. See that I see. Talk to me till I'm half as wide awake as you and start to dress, wondering why I ever went to bed at all. The next line, as written, is, tell me the walking is superb. But when I heard it spoken, the reader said, tell me the waking is superb. I've always thought that a better ending. So see that I see. Talk to me till I'm half as wide awake as you and start to dress, wondering why I ever went to bed at all. Tell me the waking is superb. The waking is superb because, as the psalm says, joy comes in the morning, at least eventually. I hope we can remember that in the days ahead, knowing that this is how these vibrant, beautiful young men lived their lives. They knew the waking was superb. I have to believe they would want you to feel that way as well. They, they would want you, when you are ready, to dance and love and sing once again. And to do so not because you've forgotten them. Devin, Lavelle, and Deshaun will never be forgotten. Dance and sing and love again when you are ready because you remember them and the light that they shared with all of us. Thank you. Thank you, President Ryan. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please turn your attention to the video board as we view a video reflection in memory of the life of Devin Chandler, followed by comments from teammates Cody Brown and Lorenz Carey. I love you, bro, for real. And all the memories I can remember, man. One specific memory. And that's dancing with you after every practice, bro, no matter what it was. I think dancing bonded us together because you always felt you had better rhythm than me. <laughs> Still replaying your voice over and over in my head. You freestyling. You always cracking a joke. 
making everybody else laugh. But you never stop smiling, man. I ain't gonna say too much, man. I'm gonna keep it G for you. You know how we rock. I love you. Rest in paradise. Keep jigging up there. Keep reeling. Be close, man. Y'all, y'all three. Y'all stay together, man. I love you. That one is a special person to bring light and joy to everybody. Made everybody smile, even when he was down. He always found a way to make everybody laugh, and keep everybody hopes up. Even on the football field, defense and practice, he always cracking a joke on coach, talking about something he shouldn't be doing this against the first team, you know. But he always had a passion for football. Came to practice with the right mindset. Kept a smile on his face and went hard at every rep he did because he, he knew he deserved his, his rep. He knew he deserved to play. He always wanted to show everybody that he can do it. But I love him like a brother, and I'm always keeping close to me. I pray for his family and everybody that knew him and everybody that gets to know him. I cannot describe to you the sadness we feel in our hearts as we mourn your loss. We never thought we would have to say goodbye so soon. It was never supposed to be this way. You will remain in our hearts forever because of the impact you made in our lives. You lit our lives up like a shining star in the sky. Your smile alone was enough to brighten up anyone's day. You had a special gift when it came to talking to people, making them laugh making them feel loved. It didn't matter if it was someone you didn't know at all. You built connections. You could talk to them like you knew them for years. Your joy for life was contagious, and you made everyone around you happy. You could find humor in any situation, even if it's something you probably should have kept to yourself. You were always true to yourself, always there. You will forever cherish that about you. You were never afraid to be yourself, and you never let anyone's words bring you down. It was your world, and you were just living in it. I watched you defy all odds, everything stacked against you, and still succeed with a smile on your face in the end. I'll never forget when we talked about never letting anyone stop us from reaching our dreams. You said you were gonna do it for your family, your mom, for everything they've done for you. We talked about our love for the game and how it's changed since we were kids. I remember vividly in Scott Stadium that day, we agreed to get that love for the game back, like the old days. Week two of fall camp, we slept at McHugh to make sure you was up early enough to get catches before me. You dedicated your life to the game of football. You were an amazing player, not just because of your God-given abilities, but because of your determination and your drive. Not only were you a talented player, you were also an amazing teammate. Your support got me through fall camp in the long season, and you were always the first player in the end zone to celebrate when someone scored. Your energy could light up any practice and your jokes in the locker room created memories that will hold in our hearts forever. Dev, you 
been fortunate and blessed enough for you to be in our lives and the impact you left on them is everlasting. We love you so much and know you're smiling down on us in heaven. Love to you. video followed by comments from teammates Chico Bennett, Elijah Gaines, and Jared Wynn. Lavelle Tyler Davis Jr. What an amazing young man. Beautiful soul, smart, hardworking, was determined, determined to be the, the great example for his younger sister and younger brother. Lavelle was a great example of all of us this community, this team, this university. I'm grateful for our time together. I'm thankful for the example that you set for our two boys, Christopher and Jackson. And they, they love you like a brother and they're gonna miss you. We're all gonna miss you. I don't know how we move forward without you. Your impact on our lives, the team, the community, the university is immeasurable. But we're gonna do our best to make sure your legacy lives on forever. Proud and fortunate to have known you, to have coached you, to have loved you. We're gonna miss you. Love you, man.
Antonio de Coronado. Now we can learn how to manage you. We gather the Lord's side. I will remember to smile and remember to be and be loved by you and, t- and continue to chase our common dreams of graduating and continuing our football career. Be able to see you in my smile again. I was just angry and ended up crying. Unfortunately, I cannot, but I know that you are smiling up there. And so for that, I will do the same down here. I love you, little brother. Laura Pico. And for Mike and Mari, I think it's safe for me to speak for all of us when I say that we are grateful that you're still here. We love you, and we got you. Enjoy the beginning. Jared Raymond, and I am honored to speak about my brother, Lavell Davis Jr. Lavelle, I love you. I love everything about your contagious smile. I love seeing how you impacted those around you, whether it be joking around in the locker room, interacting with people on grounds, or spending time away from football with those you love the most. Your love was everlasting and how you treated others was a direct reflection in how you were raised. Lavelle, you were the best teammate and friend any of us could ask for, and I hope everyone here today has someone in their life that impacts theirs, someone in their life that impacts theirs as much as you impacted mine. I struggle to find words to articulate how much Lavelle will be missed. Our football team, university, and community will never be the same without Lavelle, Deshaun, and Devin. Even though I am two years older than Lavelle, I look up to him, literally. He was a role model, not only for young football players from Ridgeville, South Carolina to look up to. He was someone who inspired me through his character, values, and ability to overcome adversity with that strive to achieve. Lavelle was a natural born leader. Watching him during workouts, conditioning, and practice set a standard that others, especially myself, aim to model. The cliche phrase, lead by example, was perfectly modeled by Lavelle. I am forever grateful to call Lavelle my teammate, friend, and brother. Lavelle's passion for the game of football went beyond just of what was required. Ever since his first year, Lavelle has always been one of the first to the facility and the last to leave. His commitment consisted of late night film sessions to early morning install review to extra catches, all to better himself as a player, but more importantly, to better his team. This has been hard for me to process, but each tear I shed for you, Bell, holds immeasurable love. The only thing that lessens my grief is the memory of your infectious smile and a comforting belief that you, Devin, and Deshaun are all in a much, much better place. So my brothers, I love you forever. Rest in peace until we meet again. Good afternoon. My name is Elijah James. Brother Lavelle, aka Tyler. Um, prior to today's speech, that my brother got to make and some things I want to highlight about my brother Tyler. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the word love. You know, a lot of us in here, or everyone in here, loves every single one of us here: Lavelle, Deshaun, and Devin. Um, I know I certainly do, and you know, dealing with this word love, I Look up the definition. The definition says, love is the intense feeling of deep affection. And I definitely have an intense feeling of deep affection towards every single one of them. I met Lavelle 2019, December, in my official visit here um, at Sakura, which is one of our, our favorite spots here. It's a, a hibachi spot. And you know, I asked Lavelle who he was, where he's from. Well, I'm from Ridgeville, South Carolina. 
like, oh, okay, like, where's this, where's that, where's that at? And I was like, it's a, it's a cool little town. Like, all right, that's what's up, I'm from Queens, New York. He's like, oh, you're from New York? I'm like, yeah, I'm from New York. Um, <laughs> and that boy loved this year, man. Uh, he always was up it, no matter what. I know us coming in here in 2020, during COVID year, you know, me, Lavelle, me, Dave, and Don, we only spoke Thursday in our, in our class. And as we were getting to know each other, we found each other where we're from. We're all from bigger cities than Ridgeville, but I swear Lavelle would make Ridgeville sound like it was the biggest city in the world. And I'm pretty sure it's only 2,000 people in there. And, you know, New York is, I don't even know how big New York is, it's big though. Um, and you know, he had this, this one tattoo on his arm, 187. And they're like, oh, okay, like, is that 187, like, the area code or whatever? He's like, no, it's, it's my exit. He's like, <laughs> and the exit, like, why are you, why are you repping that exit? He's like, that's where I'm from. I'm like, <laughs> all right, man, like, that's, that's what's up, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but you know, one thing I, I always cherish about Bell, you know, was, like Jared said, his infectious smile. Anytime I saw him, like, no matter what it was, when he smiled, I smiled. Um, he just, he had a, the greatest smile, the greatest, the passion, just his energy was, was always there, you know. Um, he'd always make fun of me for being from New York, being from New York City, this and that. Like, oh, you acting like a visual. Just, you know, just that connection that I had with Lavelle, you know, it was like having a real, real brother. And I, you know, he was my blood brother. He may not be blood down, but I consider him my blood brother. Um, one memory that really holds dear in my heart is uh, this past summer, me, Lavelle, and Chico. Um, and mostly Chico and Lavelle would make fun of me because I just got my license recently. Um, so I'd always get vibes from Chico and Lavelle, and they'd always go, oh, you don't have your license. What are you gonna do? Like, you're 21 years old, no license, da 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 I'm like, listen, man, like, I'm gonna go get it before the start of year starts. And I finally get it, get my car, like two weeks after, and then Lavelle's car is in the shop for like a month, right? I'm like, hi, like, we was talking all that trash before, like, what's up with you? Like, what's going on? Um, and I remember vividly just, I think it was early in the season, um, we walking out of McCree, just finished practice, I'm going to the trailer to go get uh, after practice mail, you about to get on a VO scooter, um, which is the little scooter that you pay for, and once you like drop it off, you, you uh, sign off. So I see him, he sees me, I make a little smirk, I walk into the trailer, I see him check into the VO scooter. I'm like, you need a ride, bro? I'm like, yeah, bro, you can tell me that before I check in. I'm like, okay, all right, bye, bye. Um, yeah, man, Lavelle was, Lavelle was a funny dude. I, I love that man. Um, he really was a blood brother, man. We went through some hard times all our years here, especially our first year here. Them workouts were insane. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll never forget the memories that he has, you know. And although, you know, he may not be here with us, you know, physically he's forever in our hearts. Everyone here is forever in our hearts. Lavelle, Devin, and Deshaun. And I know that they would want us to keep going and to push forward and cherish the loving memories that we have with each and every one of them. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you would please turn your attention to the video board to view a video that honors the memory of Deshaun Perry, followed by comments from teammates Will Betridge, Nick Jackson, Donovan Johnson, Josh McCarron, Hunter Stewart, and Ben Smiley. Just want to let you know we all love and miss you, bro. You are truly a blessing to all of us one of a kind personality. He always found a way to you know, give me rides, pick me up and drop me off to class and all. Every day, and you could tell he was getting tired of it, but you know, he, he always did it anyways. Just one of those selfish moments I had with Deshaun. One thing I remember about Deshaun, it is motive. I always found a way to get better in anything he did, whether 
music or in his art. You know, he is destined to be great in anything he did. I love you, brother. Laha. Hey, everybody. I'm Donovan Johnson. And today it's an honor to speak on Just Don't Ever Have. Um, I just want to talk about the type of person he was. Deshaun was real loving, you know, he was nice, and uh, he could make you laugh. He had the personality to light the room up, you know, he, he made everybody want to be around him. And honestly, he could make everybody laugh, so today, I just want to speak on a sense of humor he had, and um, I hope y'all can laugh. Um, so I'm thinking about this memory that I had with Deshaun, and um, I was just talking to him. He, he, he pulled up. He was like, you know, I'm about to cut my hair. I'm like, no, nah, you're not. He's like, yeah, I will towards the end of the season. And the season haven't even started yet. This is right before camp. And then one day he popped up, and he had like a fade. And then I was like, Deshaun, you're not a real dreadhead. And then he was like, bro. Ow, I had dreads, you know. And then I was like, bro, you gotta grow, you gotta grow your dreads back. He's like, bro, if my mama tell me I look good, I'm never going to dreads again. <laughs> so it's stuff like that that was cool. And then we had a time where um, this was last week on the field. He was being a little aggressive after the play, and uh, <laughs> he got pulled off the field. He like, bro. Why are they kicking me out? Like, bro, you were fighting. He like, you right, I was. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember this one time, you know, um, you know, he liked to he liked to get me on the field. So uh, we was we was doing um, scouts, and uh, this was maybe early in the season, and I didn't get the call. He gave me the wrong call, and coach looked at me like, bro, what are you doing? I was like, all right. So later on the season, maybe three weeks ago or something like that, he was like, uh, so I, he asked me what the call was. I was like, I got him. <laughs> so uh, he, he looked up, he was like, what's the call? And I told him, he blitzed him. I was like, all right. So as the play went on, he walked up, and he noticed he wasn't blitzing on that play. And then he looked over at me, he like, bro, don't ever do that again. <laughs> and then I was like, got you. <laughs> and um, that was the time we was on the field, and I was on scout team, and he was uh, starting on punt return, maybe last year. And um, we was getting after each other, and uh, coach came to me, he was like, Deshaun is bullying you, you gonna go like that? I was like, all right. So I came off real aggressive, and I was pushing at him. And then after the play, I kept pushing at him. And then he gave me the look like, you could do this if you want to. <laughs> so later in the locker room, like, he kept it up. And then I was like, no, I can't stand down. So we walk up to each other. We look in each other eye to eye. He busts out laughing. I start laughing, too. <laughs> you know, he had this, he was just a great guy, you know. And I just appreciate every moment I had with him, just being able to laugh with him all the time. And, you know, even this time where we was coming home from a away game and we didn't play so good. And uh, I don't know how the conversation started. And uh, he was talking about how his mom would, uh, we was talking about the time our moms would do the 360 hit on us when we not listening or being too loud in the car. Yeah, hit us like this and still drive real good. <laughs> so we was, uh, so we laughed about that. We was laughing a little too loud. And he got this real funny laugh that make everybody else start laughing. And Coach E got up like, yo, y'all cut that laughing out. And then if you know him, he gave me this look. He was like this. And I started laughing so hard. <laughs> but then I think Coach E looked back again. I was like, I know he caught me this time.
and just to talk about like you know he was just a great guy and uh, he was loving, caring person. You know, I'm gonna miss him. Everybody gonna miss him, and you know, um, it's an honor just to be in his presence and you know making everybody a better person. And, you know, always coming up. Ready to work, you know, and always have that mentality. And I just want to say I love you, bro. Love you, Doug. Love you, Bell. Love you, Deshaun. Hey, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Josh McCarron, uh, and I have the honor of speaking uh, about Deshaun. It's crazy to think that a uh, child's game like football could bring people together. Uh, me being from the top left of the country, and Deshaun being from the bottom right. It's a mass that's it's unfathomable that we'd ever one day meet. But as one of our former coaches once said, doing hard stuff is a weird way of bringing people together. Growing up, my father always used to tell me about great men in his life, and I was always curious about what that looked like out in the world. From the day I got to the University of Virginia, it was evident that Deshaun Perry was one of those great men my father used to speak about. Deshaun and I both being a part of the linebacking crew, or LBC, instantly gravitated towards each other. Deshaun accepted me with open arms and treated me like family. Deshaun was the brother I never knew I needed. I opened up to him one day after practice about my story, the story of me and my mother, and he told me he'd always be there for me, no matter where, no matter what times get tough, and when I didn't know where to go. He was a glass half full kind of person whose smile always lit up the room. Deshaun was special that way. No matter who you were, where you were from, or what you stood for, Deshaun loved you like no other. To see the way this tragic event has brought a community together has shown me just how beautiful as a person Deshaun was. He touched the lives of so many people, not only here in Charlottesville, but all across the country. And to see that so many of y'all saw Deshaun the way that we all saw him brings me peace and happiness. Deshaun, you were a brother, a mentor, a warrior. But above all those things, you were a blessing and a beautiful human. You were my friend, and you will forever be in my heart. I love you, Deshaun Perry. Rest in power, brother. Thank you. How's everybody doing? My name is Ben Smiley, and I'll be, be presenting my letter to Deshaun. Deshaun was a one-of-a-kind person. His loyalty and commitment to friends and family and the game of football was unmatched. Hearing the news of the recent incident was a tragedy and still a burden on my heart. Deshaun ha has always told me life is more important than football, and I never really knew what he meant. I didn't know what he meant because I thought football was life. Since the tragedy, many things he said to me, I realized the meaning. The great times we had as freshmen on campus, breaking rules, and just enjoying the times with Aaron, Mike, T and Meek, I will never get back. I just wanted to take the time to say how appreciative I am of you and your love and passion you have for the game of football. Forever live through me. You never cared what position it was. You always wanted to contribute. We, we trained countless number of times to reach our goals. Aaron played a big role in our success, making sure we knew plays and how to dominate and what we did on the field. I was very angry and had many bad thoughts of revenge from what happened to you. I knew you was all about peace and love and my mindset switched because I knew you, were, you are in a better place. All I ask is you leave some space for me and your brother and that I love you, B. My name is Will Betcher, um, my first year here. Um, I was grateful to have amazing encounters with 
all three of these angels that were taken from us. Devin, you put a big smile on my face every day when I saw you grinding and working on your schoolwork in JPJ, no matter the circumstances you were going through. It definitely made it easier for me to push and get my own work done, and I really appreciate it. Ravel, the one conversation that comes to my mind is when you told me on the sideline, you look at me and you go, damn, Will, I need to tell my son to be a kicker, man. Y'all don't do nothing in practice. <laughs> <laughs> Devin and Lavelle were two amazing souls who I was privileged to call my friends. But today, I'll be honoring my friend Deshaun Amir Perry. Words cannot describe the feeling and the different emotions that I have felt over the last few days. A piece of my life was taken from me and from our Cavalier community. You are the brother that I never knew I had. You impacted my life in so many special ways from peewee football from the Palmetto Bay Broncos to high school football with you at Gulliver Prep, now to here on the big stage. I admired you the whole way through and I could not be more proud of your success. You lit up my face with your infectious smile, your laughter, and your amazing view on life every day in school. You were a role model to me and a mentor to me as I watched, you, as I watched your every move and I wanted to be just like you. You were a rock star in the community, giving back and helping others ahead of you, and doing everything for everyone before yourself. The way that you held my, high, my head high in high school when I needed you the most is the same way that you mentored me here in college, helping me be the person I am today. Your presence was felt each and every day that I was able to step on the field and share it with you. You were always the first one to be there for me after a make or after a miss. Your outlook on life never changed. You were always, you were always gonna go out of your way for the people you love the most. I strive to be like you in many ways, your work ethic, your compassion, your mindset, and your loyalty. The world would be a better place with more people like you, Deshaun. I know you're watching over all of us here and back home in Miami and keeping us all safe. I can't tell you how much of an impact you made on my life from giving me rides to practice, back to the dorms when it was too cold for us Miami boys, or just being that person that I could talk to and relate to. Because of you, D, and my past six weeks at UVA, I saw the man that you had become, and I wanted to be just like you. Funny story, because at the Miami game, you know, a bunch of my boys, everyone knows who knows D, and they go six, and Sean came to the sideline, didn't even tell me anything, just gave me that look. He went, <laughs> said nothing, that was it. Walked away. And me and Deshaun always had the fond memories of, of Chicken Kitchen. Everyone down south, Florida people know what Chicken Kitchen is. And every time we talk, hey man, I can't wait to go back home, bro. We're gonna go to Chicken Kitchen. Um, so just those little funny memories. And a bunch of y'all saw the video of him rapping in the locker room here, but I had that in high school too. So I was, I was very grateful for that. To Miss Happy and Mr. Sean, you did an amazing job raising this compassion, sweet, talented, kind young man who will always hold a very special place in my heart. The conversations that we had yesterday at dinner and at the mountain again showed me how special your family truly is. I want to thank you for everything you have done for me and my family over the years. You supported me and cheered me on even after Deshaun left Delaware. You really are truly a special family that I'm beyond grateful to call a part of my extended family. See, seeing you guys yesterday and witnessing your strength and courage gave me the comfort and the peace I was looking for to continue and keep pushing ahead each day myself, no matter the circumstances. If I had to leave y'all with one thing, it would be to fight. Fight for everything you do, no matter the task at hand. Fight for what you want, and fight for the people you love most. Deshaun was the biggest fighter I knew and always pushed himself to be the best person on and off the field. I now fight for you, D. Everything I do is for you now, and I promise I'll make you proud. I love you. See you soon, Randall. Uh, my name is Hunter Stewart, and I 
came in with the Sean test. Uh, if you notice Sean, he was a true like modern day example of a Renaissance man. The dude could do a lot. He painted, played the piano, rapped, like loved poetry and loved all kinds of music. Uh, some of my earliest memories with Deshaun was on the sleds during Pride Fridays. If you know Deshaun when he first got here, he couldn't push a sled to save his life. And like uh, just this past summer, we had with Coach Mo, we were working out, and you got to see Deshaun grow. And like he does with everything, if he can't do it, he's gonna find a way and figure out how to do it. And this past summer workouts. Just watching Deshaun actually being able to push a sled, even more weight on it. And we had just got finished doing the workout, me, Nick, and a bunch of other linebackers, and we just went over. And you saw genuine, genuine joy for just uh, seeing your brother grow to the point where like from freshman year where he couldn't push a sled, to now he's groaning and moaning to push the sled, but he's moving it now. And just even more fond memories of Deshaun before he got his car up here, and we rode pretty much everywhere together. And then if you notice Sean, he listens to all kinds of music. If you, at first glance, you probably wouldn't think so. But like fond memories of just listening to Adele, someone like you in the car, and both of us weren't really blessed with the vocals to sing that kind of music. But we persevered and we sung anyway. Uh, even more memories of just going out with Deshaun and just talking to him and learning like why the way why he acts the way he does and just learn the influence that both his parents had on him. Uh, if everyone knows Deshaun was a fighter and I will always jokingly ask him like where he got it from and he will always jokingly respond he got it from his mom. <laughs> and just from hearing the stories, he did get it from his mom from his many stories. And just knowing that like you had a brother like that who could do multiple things and was always riding with you no matter where you was going. I always knew I was safe and protected with him, and I always knew he was going to be in for a good time, no matter what. And that's how I would love to remember Deshaun, just a man of many talents, teaching you things. As Sean, Sean Moore knows, he's been trying to teach me how to do that one Florida dance. I still can't do it. It's like, I still can't do it. I was never gifted with the hips to do it. But from now on, every celebration after any play is going to be that. Sean, I want to start by saying, hey, man, it felt like that's what you started every conversation with, regardless of the topic. Friends come and go, but brothers are forever. And Deshaun, you're one of a kind. Your unwavering loyalty, love, humor, and creativity are qualities I will never forget. You were the first person here to take me in. We took our first class together. And coming into your room afterwards and just laughing about workouts, class, and all that stuff are memories that will last me forever. And then when we moved in together during fall camp, that was quite the experience. You were the calm within the storm going on around me. Every day you pushed me. We woke up and we were going through it. But every day, every morning, you looked at me, you smirked, and said, this sucks. But afterwards, you said, let's go. And you had a one day at a time mentality, a one rep at a time mentality. I could see it in your eyes. Your passion and your love for the game was admirable. You took advantage of every opportunity you had. When we finally got to play next to each other at Georgia Tech, it had been everything we've been talking about since first year of summer. The smile on your face said it all. You pushed me so hard to be my best. Whatever I did, you had my back ferociously. You were my earthly protector, and now I have no doubt you're my heavenly protector. I love you, D. Football was only the parts that the world saw, but we got to see so much more. Seeing your laugh and being around you for four years was nothing but an honor. The joy and happiness you brought was infectious. I could never have a bad day around you. I'm so happy we screamed and embarrassed you in the locker room saying happy birthday a few weeks ago. Seeing that laugh and smile lit me up. I promise to carry your legacy on within me. I can't say I love you enough, man. LBC, until we meet again, brother.
Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, next, we will welcome the Cavalier Marching Band as they perform Amazing Grace, followed by the MLK Community Choir performing Heal Our Land. Who I call by my name would just humble themselves and pray. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. 
then they'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sins, and yes, I. Turn from your wicked way. that you will, Lord. Oh, Lord. Heal. Heal our
Thank you, MLK Choir. And ladies and gentlemen, at this time, you will hear a reflection from University of Virginia head football coach, Tony Elliott. All right, good afternoon. Appreciate that intro with the choir. It's about time to go to church. Y'all ready? All right, amen. Hey, glory to God that this is a day that the Lord has made that we will rejoice and be glad in it. As we're gathered here today to celebrate the lives of Lavelle, Devin, and Deshaun, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a second to acknowledge everybody that was on the bus on that Sunday night. My heart is with you uh, as you move forward uh, each day. Mike Collins, Marty Morgan, I'm so thankful for God's grace and faithfulness. Your bravery and strength are an inspiration to us all. Only time will reveal God's purpose in the adversity for you all. In the meantime, we all must process our feelings and emotions in search of hope, peace, and comfort. One of our team chaplains, Vince over there, shared a passage with me that I want to share with you guys that has brought me a lot of strength uh, during this difficult time. The passage comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41. To me, that's further proof that we serve a God that is faithful. The numbers alone bring me peace. Chapter 1, I mean, 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 15, verse 41. The text in the passage reads as this. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another. And the stars differ from stars in splendor. And if you know anything about verse 42, it talks about the resurrection of the dead. So how fitting that we find peace in those numbers in that verse. I also find peace in knowing how beautiful the splendor of these three stars that we're celebrating today is. As I celebrate the splendor of Lavelle and all that he has given to us, I'm forever reminded, as Chico is, of our conversation at his locker, or I say debate at his locker about Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron. My approach was very factual. If you know anything about Lavelle, his approach was purely driven by his belief. But let me tell you something, his passion for his beliefs was so strong that they inspired me to believe deeper. Not only did he uh, believe deeply, he also displayed the gentleness of God when he would walk over next to you, towering over you as a giant, put that arm around you, and in that low voice, say something to you. And the thing that I remember he said to me one day on the practice field is, Coach, I'm starting to understand it. It's the little things that matter. As I celebrate the splendor that Devin has given to us, all I can think about is the joy that he brought to every situation. You felt and heard Devin before you ever saw him. I will, I will forever be reminded each time I stand before the team, when I look to my left, second row, 12 seats in, of a young man that even sleeps or slept with a smile on his face. From time to time, I'd have to call his name to bring him back to us, but sometimes I'd just let him rest in, in peace because I knew how hard he had been working, laughing, joking, and bringing joy to everybody around him. As I celebrate the splendor that Deshaun has given us, I will forever be reminded of the beauty and depth bestowed on him. Deshaun had a handcrafted exterior that lets you know that he was a football player. But on the inside, he was intricately woven together with life, beauty, and love. Those who know Deshaun know that he loved art. There was not a prouder moment for me as a coach than the day that he shared his artwork with me. Deshaun was an inside-out type of person. He proved daily that what, on the, what is on the inside is the most important. To my three young kings, I'm eternally grateful for you. Thank you for being a light to the world. You all will continue to shine your lights bright before us in the days ahead. To the family, I am grateful for your willingness to share your family's gifts with all of us. I would want you to know that I'm a better person because of your kings. The world is a better place because of them. Going forward, I am confident that all three are rejoicing in paradise 
speaking good things on behalf of each of us in preparation for the time that we'll all be together again. To everyone here, I say, we will turn today's tragedy into tomorrow's triumph. Devin, Deshaun, and Lavelle have displayed the highest, the highest form of love by giving their lives. We have a mission going forward, and that mission requires a tremendous amount of responsibility. Amidst the pain and suffering, there is hope. The numbers three, seven, and 10 carry great significance for us going forward. On the third day, our Savior arose, three. When he arose, he arose in all, per all perfection, seven, and he left behind a community filled with his spirit, 10, to show us that God is love and love will always remain and love will ultimately win. This tragedy happened after the 10th game of the season. And at the time, we were three and seven. Weeping is gonna last for the night, but great joy is coming in the morning. Because of 1 15 41, we have the responsibility to rebuild this community and program on the legacy of their stars and do so in such a way as to bring light into the world. Lavelle, Devin, Deshaun, I am so looking forward to the strength, motivation, courage, and love that you all will provide as we triumph in the days ahead. My young kings, may you celebrate in paradise and we will celebrate on this side each and every day with the light of your stars. Devin, Deshaun, Lavelle, I love you. I'll see you again. Amen. Thank you, Coach. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start to close our program this evening, we will hear from Jack Camper, who will offer a closing prayer. Try to hold together, but you know how I don't do that time. It's for me. As I sat in my seat, listen to my teammates. Recount the memories of Deshaun, Lavelle, and Devin. It hurt me. But it only hurt me because they're not here with us right now. And I was overwhelmed by a thought, and that thought was how blessed are we, how blessed are we to have gotten to know these three young men and get to experience them in our lives, how blessed are we to know that if we believe that they're doing a whole lot better than we are right now. How blessed are we to have known three young men that are so worthy of being celebrated. And that alone is worthy of praise. So if you would, bow your heads with me. We'll go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, our most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for the immense blessings that you've showered over us. We thank you for today's events and for the opportunity to join together to celebrate our loved ones in the lives of Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis, and Deshaun Perry. Lord, forgive us, for we are so blessed, yet we fall short in every way, and even still you lift us up and continue to bless us. Lord, we thank you for having blessed us with the opportunity to have known, experienced, and been a part of the lives of Deshaun, Devin, and Lavelle. We thank you for the unique impacts that they had on each and every one of our lives. We pray that while we are sad, while we cry, and while we grieve the loss of our loved ones, while we search for answers, while we search for justifications, that we remember that you are the Lord our God. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So 
while we think our time with Devin, Deshaun, and Lavelle was cut short, that we remember that our time here on earth is just a blip compared to an eternity with you. Lord, we pray that we would not lean on our own understanding, but we would trust in you, knowing that you have the road map. You have the master plan, and that your plans are far greater than the ones that we can even imagine. I pray that as we leave here, we will find comfort in your promise in 1 Thessalonians. We who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. We pray these things in your son Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. At this time, as we prepare for a moment of remembrance and solidarity, we ask that you stand as you are able and turn on your bracelet. As the lights go down, we ask that you take time to remember and reflect on the lives of Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry, as well as how this tragedy has impacted our entire community. Throughout it all, we stand together. We stand together in our loss. We stand together in our pain. But we also stand together in our hope. Together, we are strong. I've known Lavelle for a long time. Big smile, uh, lights up the room. Uh, he's got a, a gentleness about him, but he's passionate about what he believes in. I don't think many people outside of our program understand how special Deshaun was, but just a great teammate. And then you talk about Devin, smiled all the time, loved to dance. He always brought, brought a smile to my face. I'm holding nothing back. Holding nothing back. I surrender. I surrender. You want to throw your hands up and say, I surrender. I surrender. You want to tell it right where you are. Chandler breaking tackles, tip-tying the sideline. Losses one to the back of the end zone. Davis again, wow. and he makes the catch. Yeah, big time. And hard as he throws, it's going to be back. intercepted. He shot Perry on his horse to the 20. Touchdown, Cavaliers. <laughs>
pouring out my life gracefully Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as the families of Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry, as well as the football program, exit the arena. to my heart now. 